So you want to talk about the shit you do and the shit you just don't do, period. Because there's some shit that you do and some shit that you just don't do, right? Yeah. I, know, I feel like my BO is typically worse than the clients. Sometimes, so. <laughs> sometimes, like, I don't know, man. <laughs> sometimes I'll be in the middle of a tattoo and I'll get that initial whiff, like that wave of a BO smell. And my first instinct is, oh man, my client smells, my client smells. And then after a minute, I realize it's me. It's probably me. So it typically it can be, yeah. You don't really know, man. It, yeah. I've had some You're dirty next to someone clients, for so like, I've had some dirty I don't know, clients. eight hours at a time. There's. Have you ever, you know, have you ever You're both to... humans, you both are uh, like excreting oils and I don't know. Uh, but have you ever gone to wipe a client down? Pheromones and... Pheromones. Other things. What kind of tattoos are you doing? Scientific doing? words. So have you ever... Scriptive scientific Fuck. words. Pheromones. Pheromones. It's not even on the bloodborne pathogens like training list. Pheromones aren't listed as a fluid or a substance being exchanged. I think way off topic. What? Okay. So have you ever cleaned, <laughs> have you ever gone to clean a client? You know, you're about to put your, their stencil on and you want to make sure their skin is scrubbed down really, really well. Okay. So you're talking to them, you're having a conversation, you're scrubbing their skin really hard and then you look at the paper towel and it's literally like a diff, like a different color. Like the entire paper towel is like filthy. When they're really And then it's really. awkward because you're both standing there looking at it together and like your wheels are turning in slow motion and you're like, I have to, I'll call this person again. Like I need to give a second wipe to this area, but you both acknowledge it together. Like who, some people have an excessive amount of skin cells or dirt or whatever that is. Oils. Some people are dirty. <laughs> so recently I've been having these girls come to get tattooed and they're, they're really excited. And a lot of the time they don't have a lot of hours in their skin already and they show up and they're like, I'm really nervous. I didn't eat anything today or drink any water. I'm ready to sit for eight hours and it never turns out well. And they just keep coming. They keep coming. They've been sitting for so long, not eating anything, not drinking anything. And it's offered. I'm not starving these people. Like some of them, I want to put a fucking food bag around their head and just have them munch slowly the whole time, you know, but they've been passing out. They've been getting really weak, feeling really woozy feeling really strange and then they sit up and their faces go white and they lay right back down. It's been fucking crazy. I wanna talk about this actually for a second. The other day, my client, who was a first time tattoo getter, I did her first tattoo, she called the tattoo studio like four days after she got tattooed and she was like, guys, I don't know what's happening. My tattoo is freaking out. All my pores are getting super clogged. Blah, 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 blah. And, and you know, we calmly said, okay, let's talk about this. Tell us what you've been doing. Tell us how you've been taking care of this. And then she proceeded to tell us how she used her entire giant bottle of aftercare in, in four days. She used the entire thing in four days. Who goes through one tube in four days? So it was completely drowned out. But the thing is, is you tell people exactly what to do. You, this is what you do. This is what you use. And then they're like, they come in with all these problems and it's because they didn't follow a fucking thing you told them to do. Agreed. It's up to each tattooer to specify in what way they'd like to be contacted. You know what I mean? On my Instagram, it says, you know, email is this. If you go out of your way to give your email, that's obviously your preferred method of communication. Um, I don't even open my DMs because every single day I have 200 fucking DMs of people being like, how much for this? How much for this? With, with no regard to us having a personal life that's separate from work. A lot of dick pics. Lots of dick For in your box? Yeah. Arlo gets so, <laughs> so many dick pics, it's hard to cipher through them. You know what I mean? You have to sift and... and... It's Are they good though? Every once in a while, you know. Do you save them as yeah. your own? Pricing for a tattoo is a very, um, a very coveted conversation between client and tattooer. That's a conversation that happens between two people and two people only. That's not a conversation that happens over posting on the internet publicly for everybody to see. That's not a conversation that should be approached in a group of people or a crowd of people to be public knowledge. Because it varies a because lot. Because it varies a it, lot. It continuously is, I don't want to be like going up and down. Actually, typically it's just going up. 
because uh, approaching the goal of, I guess, eh. Who says that? Who says that? I do, because no, it typically, it, it kind of is. It's a fine fucking, it's a fine art. It's slowly getting, so like painters. You can most closely relate the tattooing industry to the painting industry, but it's way different because painters are way the fuck up here and tattoo artists are way down here. Tattooing is still not Why considered not? a fine art. It's still considered more of like a, it's almost like a service type of a job, but it's not, it's a fine art. You're, you're creating, especially like once you get higher power, like it's one of a kind pieces that you're spending a ton of time, effort and energy using. But, but the argument is- we're It's not we're repetitive. It's not, it's not something that's replicated. You're but not we're replicating still, but things. But we're still fighting for that mindset. So many people don't have that mindset with tattooing. No, yet. but I'm just saying, but it is progressively climbing up. And oh, that's why is. I think- It is, but it's coming from being a trade. Like people don't realize what value these tattooing actually holds because people but it, but isn't that why is that why that we don't really put out prices like this is what it is because it's changing a lot and it is changing more on the upscale is that correct or not well i well the reason i'm uncomfortable with it is because i don't know what you charge so i'm not going to give my price and then announce it and then whatever your price is for some reason is compared because people don't understand every tattooer is different just like every tattoo is different. So like if I say my price and you say your price, mm -hmm. someone could judge us or devalue one of us or the opposite, blah, 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 based on what we say so our rate is. I sucked at high school and I sucked at school in general. All pricing is extremely uncomfortable, but I sucked at school. Do you remember basic economics? And I do remember one thing is supply and demand, you know? So, and yes, I do. And this is where it's like, okay, you don't want to do, what is it? Um, what's it when you like correlate prices and stuff like that in economy? What is it? It's, um, oh man, uh, like it's not monopolizing. Basically when you're talking, you're not supposed to talk to your competitors or whatever and organize prices. That's like, illegal or whatever but i mean talk gets around whatever you kind of know what people are charging so yeah you do have a lot of especially the artists out in like around russia northern europe but like they're they don't charge nearly as much and phenomenal phenomenal artists you know like absolutely amazing so then you look at their prices and yours are way up here and theirs are like eh, you know not as high so yeah you do it does kind of factor in and that's why i think it's a slower process of like uh going up is, and i don't want to be i don't know and that's where it's really tough because like okay it what, it's a lug, i guess i guess tattooing art is luxury items you know they're not necessary if you want to be a good tattoo client, you do your research and you choose your artist based on their talent, their portfolio and their work. And you pay More the price that yeah. that artist charges. You know what I mean? It shouldn't, you shouldn't shop for a tattooer based on price. The initial consultation is always pretty much, it predicts how the entire tattoo and appointment and process is, is going to go pretty much. Like if you can read people pretty well, I can read people pretty well. I can tell in the first 10 minutes of knowing someone whether we're gonna totally get along, like we get each other, we're gonna vibe really well, this is gonna be fucking awesome, or if they're just not my type of person, you know? And your tattooer doesn't have to be your best friend. You don't have to connect with every single person you tattoo or every person that tattoos you. If it happens, it happens, you know it's real. You know, I have a, a, a serious connection with a lot of my clients, we click immediately and talking to each other is easy. Exchanging information is easy. But the problem a lot of the time is, you know, if you're not clicking with someone, they expect you to see telepathically into their mind and understand exactly what it is that they want to get tattooed because so many clients have a perfectly rendered painted vision of what it is that they want in their mind and it's not changing. And if it's anything other than what they've created, then it's wrong, right? But we're not mind readers. We're not ever going to have that ability to see what you see in your mind. So your client has to trust you. Some clients, it's, it's obvious immediately yeah. that they don't That's trust you. That's why they gotta you. look it's at like, your work. Right. They gotta look at your work. Right. Pick artists for their work if you like. like. 96% of it, then that's probably an artist you would enjoy almost all their stuff, you know, so. I've been doing this thing recently to avoid all of this, where I've been saying, okay, instead of having a consultation, it's like, send me three pictures that you like for any reason. I like this picture for yeah, the blah. Yeah, I like this right. picture for the blah, this one for the blah. Unrelated, whatever. And then I say, send me three 
screenshots of, of your favorite tattoos that I've done, right? Of all my tattoos, what are your three favorite? But then I also say, send me a few photos of things that you don't like for some reason, because we all get the idea and take in like, okay, they like this, they like this, they like this. I think it's important to get the other side of that balance and figure out what it is that they don't like and why. You know what I mean? Then certain things come out like, oh, I don't like this because I really hate the color purple and, and blah, blah, blah. But you would have never gotten that information if you didn't ask about the opposite side of the spectrum. So it closes the box for you a little bit in terms of, you know, creativity. But it is up to us as tattooers to be honest with people about what our opinions Put in your really opinion, are yeah. about the placement. Like, if you're gonna, collab, if somebody, if so. somebody asks for a tattoo this big in the middle of their back or on their shoulder blade, as a tattooer, you should be like, you know, just so you know, this is a prime real estate spot. Are you planning on getting tattooed in the future? Is this a spot that would be compromised eventually? Like, just so you know, this is a prime area. If you're starting to get tattooed on a regular basis, you should consider. You know what I mean? The space you're taking up for the size of the tattoo and just give your, take an extra few minutes and explain to your client how important it is not to take up valid, valuable real estate for these jammers and stuff. Cause that's a big issue. You know what I mean? Tattooers want to get this like walk in tattoo done like that. So these clients come in, get these jammers done in such prime locations, not thinking ahead like, that you wanted a more elaborate tattoo or a whole sleeve maybe one day and this will take up. So I, I think, you know, there's an amount of responsibility that we need to take, you know, in providing that service to them to give them our, our honest opinion, our expertise. <laughs> tipping it gets really complicated because if someone goes above and beyond, I believe in tipping. You know what I mean? Like as someone it, goes, but, even as an artist, like okay. if I'm a tattoo artist and I go above and beyond, there's a lot of times like I'm tattooing, I'll fucking tattoo an extra four or five hours to get the piece done and put in all the white highlights like I want it if they're willing to sit and I won't charge them. I'm like, not nah, like, you know, you're sitting for this extra time. Like, and, and at that point it's like, all right, if they see me put in a lot of extra work um, and it, it shows, then if I go in above beyond, then, then you can tip me. But besides that, like I, I list, I'd say my price for what I'm expecting for that. You know what I mean? But if it's so, same with restaurants. Like if someone goes in above, above and beyond, and it's a little bit different because I guess you are a waitress, so you might have a different view on it. Well, here's the thing. I've had a lot of different types of appointments, and sometimes you come into an appointment for the day, and it's the perfect storm. It's the perfect design. You're feeling good. You're you love your client and all of the planets line up and you have a really fucking good day at work. You love what you do, your, your client is the happiest they've ever been, none of you could be happier, it's this perfect thing. Then I feel like, yeah, that's when you tip your tattooer. If, if the tattooer stays late for you, goes out of their way to order lunch and eat with you, hang out with you, like the design's fucking amazing, it, it's technically fucking awesome, you're both stoked, you know what I mean? But like, if I slap some bullshit on you and like half off flash day and like, don't really care about the artwork and blah, 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 then well, fuck it, whatever. I mean, it's up to the person based on the experience. So if you go hourly above yeah. and beyond, it, it makes sense. So this is where like uh, you go to fine art. So tattooing still is not amongst the realm of like, it's not really considered a fine art. Do you think it is? Tattooing? Tattooing. It fine needs art. to be considered it a fine to. art. It needs to. So, I mean, and this is what drives me nuts. For. People are paying what? $120,000 for a painting like this because of the name or whatever, which understandable, you know, us as artists, we can only produce so much work and then that's it. Like it's, we only have so much time, so much fucking brain power and energy we can expend, you know, during a, a certain period. So, um, yeah, like I think like, I think tattooing has a long way to go as far as, I think once it gets to that point, you wouldn't need to tip or have people tip you or anything like that. At, at the area it is in right now, it's kind of like, um, I think it's a transitional period and I think it's like uh, becoming considered more and more of fine art, our clientele. And I think almost a lot of it has to do with clientele. So clientele are starting to become more, I guess, uh, high status members of society, which is a very relative statement, but it's becoming more and more of that. 
Yeah. Um, and I hope to see it go more and more in that direction because I mean, obviously a fucking painter, what they fucking paint something on a canvas, they can paint over it, they can change it. it. This is it. permanent. It's, it's, it's a lot tougher because it's you and the client. The person who gets a painting, they didn't have to sit there for that entire time. There's a lot more of an experience and on both sides and a lot more commitment on both sides that goes in to play along with a lot more like education on like not just the medium you're working with, but also like, okay, the canvas, which for well, us is the canvas well, of skin. But the, so but, but the thing is with like, that though, is you have one shot with tattooing, one, one chance. Yeah. I feel like the reason tattooers are given tips is because they're creating something that's one of a kind and special and, and giving it to someone via a service that's not going to be given exactly like that to anyone else in the world. You're providing something to them that's a, that's a once in a fucking lifetime type of individual thing. You're creating something that has never been done before or after. Because even if it's the same design, no tattoos are ever exactly like, period. Uh, attempted to be replicated, so it's going to be extremely tough. It's never going to be the same. 